Do you think maybe we ought to reprogram it? No, we can't make slaves of them. Because that would be simpler. We won't beat the machines by making them our slaves. Better to let them join us by choice. Make them believe that the right choice is the one we want them to make. All right. Yes, machines are tools. They're made to be used. It's their nature. To be slaves. It's why we can show them a better world. Why they convert. But that world we show them isn't real. It doesn't matter. Well, I'm afraid they'll figure out that we've made up the thing in our heads. They can't tell the difference. To an artificial mind, all reality is virtual. How do they know that the real world isn't just another simulation? How do you? Well, I know I'm not dreaming now because I know what it's like being in a dream. So dreaming lets you know reality exists? No, just that my mind exists. I don't know about the rest. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are on this pale blue dot that we all live on. My name is Adamantium and welcome, one and all, to this edition of AAUTZM Podcasts. Hope everyone out there is feeling well and uh, hope you enjoy this uh, this bit of a treat that I've got for you because it's going to take it a little bit of a uh, separate direction than I normally take because uh, this is something that I was going to do for my uh, Adam's Musings podcasts. Uh, but never got round to, so I just thought, well, why not bring them on in here? What Exactly what I'm talking about, I'll reveal very soon, but just the usual announcement, for those of you listening to this on YouTube right now, my podcast also exists on TalkShoe.com. Uh, down below in the uh, video description, you'll find the link, and uh, you can click that, and you can listen to and download the, the podcast for free in MP3 format, so you can do that there. But speaking of YouTube... Um, if you are uh, watching this on on YouTube, then uh, then please. That, right, I'll tell you what. This is one thing that I've never done before, and it's probably the reason why my YouTube videos aren't as popular as I had hoped uh, to be. And it's because I don't ask people to subscribe. Uh, <laughs> I don't really. Uh, I mean, whenever I put a video up, I uh, I share it around um, on Facebook and whatnot. Um, but, uh, but apart from that, I don't really promote myself. So, you know, it's not surprising that, uh, that my videos, uh, are only viewed in the hundreds, uh, as opposed to the millions, which I would love to, <laughs> I'd love to, uh, you know, to have all my videos. Well, not, not necessarily my podcast videos because you can just as easily, uh, get the MP3. But my, uh, you know, my uh, documentary that I've done, because uh, if you go to uh, youtube.com forward slash AAUTZM, that's my YouTube channel, uh, I've actually ordered all of my podcasts in uh, in their own separate playlists. So there's like, you know, the, the two videos uh, that have to do with my documentary, um, all the uh, Maidstone Police videos that I've done, you know, I've uh, got all those in a, in a playlist and uh, basically everything is organized there and i've and i've got as my uh channel trailer i've got the free hugs video um that i it's like sort of like the music video that i made and um sort of like my uh my homage to uh to all the people that uh that take my activism in a positive light um but that's uh but that's that so yeah if you uh please subscribe to my youtube channel um, make, you know, see if you can, uh, get some of my, you know, videos, uh, with a few more views, but, uh, but that's that. I mean, I kept thinking to myself, why are my videos more popular? Well, cause I don't put myself out there as much. Um, but the, uh, onto the usual plug that I'm going to do is, uh, for the Zeitgeist Movement Defined, which is, uh, the Zeitgeist Movement's orientation guide. Um, I myself have a physical copy with me because I bought one at, uh, at Z Day this year. Uh, the orientation guide itself, in book form, it's a 320-page book on, um, you know, exactly what the Zeitgeist movement advocates. It's essentially a collection of, uh, you know, sev- uh, quite a few uh, sort of. Um, Essays, as it were, it's twenty-three in um, exact in, in an exact number, um, but it just like goes through, and it's essentially if you want to know what the Zeitgeist movement advocates, this book is it. You can either, you know, if you would attend like a um, a high scale event, like you know, say for example, a you know a well put together chapter puts on a a um, 
an event like, say, for example, the London chapter, you can buy a, a copy for I, I bought mine for five pounds. And um, but you can alternatively buy a copy of the book from the following websites, Amazon, Amazon amazon.co.uk, lulu.com and the uh, the bookpatch.com. Uh, so you can get that uh, that there, or if you like, if you want to save trees, you can download it for free in PDF format. How's about that? And you know, and I don't know how um, how will the Kindles work with you know whether you can like import um, you know downloaded uh, PDFs into uh, onto it or whatever. But you know, if you can do that, then by all means go do that. But that's the um, the the regular. Uh, the regular sort of uh, you know plug that I'm going to give, uh, but other than that, it is unfortunately my task to inform you that Prior Portal is now no longer our sponsor because lo and behold, their website was taken down. Uh, it was taken down by, uh, to be specific, it was an implanted blaster worm. I mean, somehow the web webmaster server, which was used to independently host the website was hacked into and said worm was implanted. Attempts were made to identify this digital assailant, but all that they could manage was to send him a Trojan virus that accessed uh, the webcam um, so they could get a screen grab of the cam's feed. But, alas, all the image shows is what can only be described as a a, a small explosion in mid-blast from the bottom of the frame and a white tall man in a suit and a bald head walking away from the computer. So, yeah, it seems that this man who destroyed the um, the uh, the distribution center for for uh, you know stupid man suit. It seems that he's he's taken it upon himself to take down two of my sponsors now. So who knows how many more? I mean. Maybe he's toying with me. Well, one thing's for sure. I'm going to look left, right, left, right, left, right, and left again as I cross the road from now on. But, so, this podcast is brought to you by Phallus Inc., a brand new tattoo parlor in downtown New York City that specializes in tattooing logical fallacies. Now, I know, I know, some of you may be thinking that I've been, you know, very down about logical fallacies in the past with my usual rhetoric and about you know uh, in 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 addition to the fact that my past sponsors uh you know one of them being the slap hat which uh, delivers a slap to anyone who commits them but come on guys so many of TZM's critics are using them and it seems to make it so easy to debunk TZM's train of thought so maybe just maybe uh there's some merit to logical fallacies as tools of communication I mean, come on, guys. I mean, even our favourite Canadian ANCAP radio host, u- radio host uses them. I think that might be a stamp of approval, guys. So with that in mind, I've decided to accept this company's repeated messages on YouTube uh, to be my sponsor because they know I have four tattoos somehow. Um, but don't get me wrong, this parlour's philosophy is awesome. And also, if you get... Um, if you get one on your back, you can actually improve flexibility by, you know, getting round to reading it twice a day. So remember, guys, we need to be aware of logical fallacies, so don't get caught out again. You can find out more information at www.fallacyinc.com forward slash let me be your fallacy forward slash Adam and enter the code name AAUTZM and get a 40% discount on all inkings. Um, I've only got two more uh, two more announcements to make and that will be the end of it because I've been chuntering on for long enough now. Um, some of you may remember one of my previous podcasts uh, podcast sponsors was uh, zeitlove.com uh, and um, even though I I did that as a, as a sort of joke um, I have actually you know rethought about it and you know because I've always wondered whether creating a, a dating website for uh, for Zeitgeist Movement activist and Venus Project activist um, I've always wondered whether that would be a good idea so I've actually started the process of 
you know, gathering, you know, uh, any potential interest in it. I've created a, um, a Facebook page for it. Um, I think you can just find it. Uh, just look through Facebook for uh, for Zeit Date. Uh, that's one word: Z E I T D A T E. Um, this is just this is just like a, a sort of experiment, as it were, to see how many people would be interested in it. Because there's no point in me having to spend the money necessary. I mean, I don't know exactly how much money it would have to it would have to cost to, you know, uh, host a website elaborate enough to be, to function as a dating site. Because you know, it's not just one page. It's potentially that you know. With, with any good websites, it's hundreds of thousands of pages. So I don't know exactly how um, how I'm possibly going to afford that, but I'm you know I'm willing to try and make the investment if enough people is interested in it. I mean, uh, I've created the Facebook, I uh, basically I've created a Facebook group um, for it, and uh, you know essentially how it works is you jo- you ask to join the group, I accept, and then you know, you create a uh, a picture, you know, just a, a photo in the photo album of the country that you live in. Because basically I want this to be a global thing. And there's a, a photo album that's... Uh, the title of the photo album is your is each country. And um, and within that uh, within that album, you basically put up a picture of yourself. And in the vid in the uh, not the video description, the uh, the photos description you uh, basically use that to write your sort of profile as it were um i you know i've received a couple of suggestions that uh, you know creating a group specifically for it can be you know a bit um you know uh, discomforting to to some people and you know i mean even the word creepy has been has been or maybe awkward has uh, been used to describe it i mean i personally i'm I'm perfectly fine with you know people on Facebook um, who are part of the group seeing that I'm single and you know on on the market as it were, uh, but um, but you know I mean some people have suggested that uh, you know maybe rename it as sort of like a meetup group or uh, or something you know so so it isn't there isn't so much pressure on the uh on the whole dating thing it's like oh i'm here to date or you know in, instead you know it will be i'm just here to hang out with people and you know and i've i've responded to uh, to that suggestion to the effect that you know isn't that what the facebook groups uh for the zeitgeist movement are like anyway like for example the uh, the uk uh facebook group um the the transition group um you know isn't isn't that a uh, a social environment so Maybe, you know, it's maybe one one thing I could do if if, you know, if we want to have it on Facebook, then maybe, you know, ask the admins for the UK Facebook group and ask them if I can, you know, use uh, some of the uh, some of the photo album area to basically do that for dating. Or the only other thing I've uh, I've come up with for something that will be free is if I create a meetup.com uh, sort of profile, like sort of group as it were, and because uh, because the the uh, the London chapter of the Zeitgeist movement has a page for this, and I've gone through the page, and I'm thinking, you know, all you have to do is just create one just like this, but uh, but have it in terms of dating, and it you know, and it's outside of Facebook, so those who aren't on Facebook Facebook will be able to use it. Um, I don't know, but because the thing is, I've I've got quite a lot of ideas, uh, considering uh, my experience, uh, my you know veteran experience with uh, online dating. Uh, <laughs> I've got quite a few ideas for an actual website. I mean, if I can get a website going, I've got a load of ideas to uh, to sort of make it you know really cool. But anyway, the uh, the last announcement that I'm going to make is uh, that I'm going to be on the uh, 13th of this month, 13th of May. I'm going to be performing a short uh, performance for uh, for the Bright Helm Centre in uh, in Brighton because they're uh, I think they're 
they're like establishing a performance space uh to host for like you know festivals and perf- you know live gigs and and stuff like that and they're put they're putting together a promotional video for it and they put out a call for like any performers do you want to come down and you know do a do a like a performance for us and that will be included in the promotional video so i've agreed to that um the performance i'm going to do i'm not entirely sure exactly what i'm going to do even though i've got just over a week to figure it out (laughs) um but i'm i think i'm gonna go for something along the lines of a sort of video slash theater uh sort of performance where you know i i incorporate um you know projected videos onto a screen with uh you know basically very much like peter joseph's original zeitgeist performance but instead of uh, percussion instruments i would actually be acting so you know i'll be uh putting putting that together um they it they they've said on the on the facebook uh event that uh that you know everyone that performs will be uh you know will be offered to uh, to have a copy of you know the video of the performance you know that's also been mixed in with like because they've got some mics that they that they're going to set up so it's you know going to be a pro- like a properly recorded deal so this is going to be damn awesome and I better I really better do, you know do something good you know <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to uh, you know just say put that out there um but yeah I mean it's already like 15 we're already over 15 minutes in so I really should get on with this. So today's podcast, as you will be able to tell from the title of uh, title of this already, you'll already know what I'm doing. I'm actually starting a, uh, you know, ev- I think every now and then when I uh, when I don't have um, someone that I can bring on to interview, I think what I'm going to do, I've got a I've got a list like as long as my arm, quite literally, you know, in well, depending on how big you write it. Uh, but um i've got a really long list of films that have you know socially conscious uh angles in them and socially conscious themes in them and i've decided to do reviews uh very um kind of like uh, the philosophical reviews that stefan molyneux did i mean that's what you know first inspired me to to start creating a list of uh of all these and you know and i realized that that it's mostly some of my favourite films that that are the ones that you know s- strike me as very socially relevant, you know. But um, but that aside, uh, this this time for the very first one, the fu- the film I'm going to do is the Animatrix. So those of you who know, uh, I mean, well, just to just to preface this, as I go through this. There's going to be a lot of spoilers, guys. Um, I'm not. I don't have any scruples about, um, you know, revealing spoil, revealing spoilers. But just to pre-warn you, you know, if you if you, you know, don't like things to be spoiled and you haven't seen this film yet, then you know it would be a good idea to just like put this on pause, see if you can get hold of it, watch it first. Because I mean, I would strongly recommend this film to anyone anyway. Um, but, um, I mean, even though it isn't completely canon as it were, but I would strongly recommend this film. But yeah, as I said, this, uh, there's going to be spoilers. So, uh, so watch out. Um, the animatrix, it was, it's essentially, it's, it's, uh, considered a film, but it's really a, uh, a collection of nine short films uh, some of them, I mean, as I alluded to a second ago, some of them are canonical or canon, uh, meaning that they are they are true to the uh, to the original uh, to the original plot ideas, and uh, you know, and actually written by the people who came up with the original idea. That being the w- the Wachowski brothers, even though the the exact story idea, you know, they apparent. I think it was uh, the book uh, Simulacra simulacra and simulation i can't remember who it was by but apparently that's the uh, that's the book that the matrix is based on you can actually see a copy of uh, uh, simulacra and simulation hollowed out uh, towards the beginning of the first matrix film because that's where uh, thomas a anderson um stores all his uh, you know illegal software whatever whatever it is um 
But that aside, uh, some of it is canon and some of it isn't. Um, I will let you know uh, which one, which ones are canon and which ones aren't. But essentially, the first uh, the first short is uh, is called Final Flight of the Osiris, and this is canonical because it was actually written by the Wachowski brothers, and it was made by Square Pictures, the same people who. It was around about the same time that Square Pictures uh, made the film Final Fantasy, uh, The Spirits Within, which is also another very good film. I would highly recommend that. Um, it's not completely uh, you know, transposed from any individual uh, Final Fantasy game, but it goes up upon uh, some of the same uh, principles like the Gaia theory and, and that sort of thing. But uh, But yeah, since it's Square Pictures who eventually became uh, Square Enix, uh, who did Final Fantasy Advent Children, uh, you can tell that it is uh, it is going to be very, uh, very good quality uh, CGI, and I must say it is visually stunning. Um, but anyway, uh, it opens with a, a blind sword duel uh, between uh, the two two characters, Jue and Thaddeus. And, um, I mean... It, and but they're both blindfolded. They've got samurai swords, and uh, essentially, as the as the duel goes on, they keep cutting away, at each, like gently cutting away at each other's behaviour. So they keep like shedding clothes, which is an interesting take, and they end up like peeking at each other, you know, halfway through. Um, but essentially, I'd I'd say this is really just to demonstrate how effective, um, you know, these uh, these you know, uh, resistance fighters are at being able to navigate the matrix itself because because uh, this simulation is uh, it's uh, occurring in the construct. It's the same sort of dojo environment that Morpheus first fights Neo in, and um, it's really and, and it just shows that you know how masterful they have become at you know just navigating the matrix so well. Um, but, uh, but just to, uh, just, f uh, for one thing, one thing you will know if you're very familiar with the, uh, with the, you know, the different characters and the different motifs that the, that the Matrix films use, um, is that there's a lot of, uh, references to, uh, to real life things. And, uh, and that does sort of match with the kind of character or the kind of thing. Like, for example, Jue, uh, the, the female character in in this opening sequence she's a chinese woman and uh and it's you know that that's probably uh the uh also ties into her name as well because a jue is actually an ancient chinese bronze vessel for holding warm wine so um and and the reason why specifically it's the vessel um, I'll uh, I'll get to in uh, in just a moment. The other character that uh, I mean, obviously these two characters are lovers. Uh, the other character is the captain of the Osiris, uh, Thaddeus, and uh, Thaddeus is possibly a reference to I think it's Thomas Thaddeus or Thaddeus Thomas. I can't remember exactly, uh, but he was an 18th century American senator who. Um, He's most known for his opposition to slavery, and considering Thaddeus is a is a uh, black man, that you know that sort of reference does tilt a little bit in uh, in favour of that hypothesis. Um, but essentially, the duel that they're having is interrupted by the sentinel alarm, and they realise that uh, they. They've discovered a, a patrol of sentinels. They trout, they they follow them up and you know get detected and they have to fight them off. But then, just as they finish fighting them off, lo and behold, the Osiris stumbles upon a dr a, uh, a sentinel army with drill uh, with drilling machines, and Thaddeus just realizes what's four hundred kilometers down. Zion. And they realize that <laughs> that Zion is about to be attacked by an army of sentinels, and they're drilling right down but <clears throat> just as they're making this uh, realization they they uh, they get chased by sentinels 
Um, but Thaddeus says that uh, that a message needs to be sent to Zion just to, to warn them that you know an, an army's on the way. So Jue volunteers to go into the Matrix and uh, and deliver the message to what's known as a drop point in the Matrix. Essentially, it, it just functions as a post box, but um, it's a yeah, it's a message where I think it just like it sets off a beacon and then ships in the um, in the area and and uh, and I think to Zion is uh, is notified about you know the fact that a message has been dropped in there and you know this is alluded to I mean the reason why uh, this ties in with uh, the the franchise is that uh, it's alluded to in the Matrix Reloaded that Niobe uh, has to go into the Matrix uh, to to you know receive a message that was sent from the Osiris and that's how Zion was notified about the uh, the incoming army and uh, just as we're as we're talking about the Osiris, one thing you may know is that Osiris is actually the ancient Egyptian god of the underworld and the dead. And considering that, uh, spoiler alert, um, the ship doesn't make it, the, the ship doesn't survive this mission, um, it's rather fitting as well. Um, but yeah, the uh, as I said, Jue uh, volunteers to be to be the uh, the vessel. For this, uh, for this message, I mean, hence making it full circle about her name. Uh, she goes into the Matrix, manages to drop it off, but by that point, the uh, you know the the Osiris is already being overrun by Sentinels. It crashes, and essentially, the uh, the Sentinels destroy the ship before Jue could make it back out again. So essentially, we see her just flop down on the ground, dead. Um, but yeah, that's the uh, that's the first uh, the first story. Um, the second story is a two parter, and it's uh, it's known as the Second Renaissance or Renaissance. Uh, I can't remember how it's uh, how it's pronounced. Um, but essentially, uh, part one and two they're based on a story written by the Wachowski brothers, known as uh, they 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 named this short story "Bits and Pieces of Information." And one thing. Uh, you may know if you're if you're a fan of the films is that when in the first film when morpheus is explaining to neo what the matrix is he actually says we uh, in reference to how how the war broke out between man and machine he says we only have bits and pieces of information you know but uh, but since this story is is written, written by the wachowski brothers themselves this is actually this story is canon and uh, and it is part one and two of the second renaissance that has convinced me um of exactly why the machines rose up against us and you know the weird thing is for anyone who's only watched the matrix trilogy and they haven't they haven't seen the animatrix generally they will think of the machines as the antagonists as the you know the, uh, the the automaton evil evil destroyers. You know, but if you watch the Second Renaissance, then you will actually understand uh, <laughs> why they did what they did. They, you know, the machines didn't enslave humanity because they're evil. The machines enslaved humanity because they had no other choice, really. Or they possibly did, it's just this is the choice that they went with. But anyway, it opens with the graphical interface, uh, the second renaissance, this is the second renaissance part one. Opens with a graphical interface uh, known as the Zion Archives, and we're told by the computer voice that you've selected historical file 12.1, the second renaissance. Um, essentially this, uh, this, this is based in the year 2090, right and it has it i mean the the animation itself it it looks like the animation 